All right, why don't we get started? Um, <clears throat> and uh, let's call the roll. Okay. Uh, Dick Raven. Present. Ira Grimes. Present. Alex Burke. Present. Mary Litteris. Present. And I'm Dick Passeri. Uh, we are also have uh, Gene Ackley and Aaron Umet. All right, this is a, um, a meeting of the Newbury uh, Library Board of Trustees. It's being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. We're almost into this for a year, folks, as you didn't already know that. Uh, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth through the outbreak of COVID. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID, uh, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. And this meeting, as we always have, we allow participation, but participates. Um, so for this meeting, we are convening by Zoom and it's being recorded. That's it. All right. First item on the agenda, I assume, is the minutes. Yes. All right. Uh, the meeting was called to order via Zoom at 10 a.m. in attendance. Dick Vasari, Margaret Grimes, Chair of the Tourist, Alex Burke, Dick Raven, Jean Ackerley. Erin, I don't have you on there. Were you at our meeting? I don't think she was at the last, okay. the last one. Good. No. All right. No worries. I just want to make sure I didn't leave you off. <laughs> the board voted unanimously to approve the minutes from the November 20th meeting. Jean presented her director's report and monthly statistics. The next meeting will be Friday, January 15th at 9.30 via Zoom. The meeting adjourned at 10.50 a.m. All right. I, I, just one thing, Margaret. Was that a yeah. nine o'clock? Was that a nine o'clock meeting? As no, it was at 10 o'clock. Oh, it? maybe it was a nine o'clock. Was yeah, it? Cause, yeah, because yeah. I, missed, I missed part of it. Oh, so right. Because I, I thought it was at 10. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there you would know that then. Yes, All right, I, I will change that. I will so change I've been, that. I've been sitting in front of this computer since 8.30, so I wouldn't <laughs> miss this one. <laughs> I've, I've had a, I've had a white card stuck to my TV for the last three days. So, yeah, I had, my, I had my wife call me from work this morning to remind me too. So. Oh, oh my gosh, that's funny. Uh, I will change stuff. that. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, approval of minutes as amended. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Director's report. Okay, so starting out with the budget, um, it's I'm trying to make this as straightforward and simple as I can these days. So basically, the we've passed almost half the year, fiscal year, forty at forty eight percent of the year at the at the on, uh, December twenty fourth, and in expenses we've spent fifty eight percent of our budget, and in wages we've spent forty seven percent. And that's municipal. Um, I, I'm not really tracking the percentages for state aid and wages because it's you can see the the numbers there. We've got just about 1,300 left out of um, 8,815 that was budgeted. So mm -hmm. we're we're in good shape there. Um, so I guess that's that's it for the budget, unless people have questions. Any questions for anybody? No? Okay. Next up. And Erin, you want to do your statistics? Sure. 
Um, uh, well, there were a couple of interesting things, and, I, and Hootsuite sent me a lovely um, breakdown of our social media um, kind of what we did, what we accomplished this past year, which was nice. Um, did you all get that yes. attachment too? Yep. Um, so we are, we continue to grow our following, our followings across all social media venues and that's good. Um, they're all a little different um, as far as what the people on those venues are looking for which is always interesting. Like the, the top posts for Facebook will often differ from the top post in Instagram and from the top posts in Twitter from the same month. So they're different people. Um, so anyway, so that was, that was an interesting breakdown. In general, um, universal class is through the roof still. Um, I still don't know why. I'm wondering if there are teachers that are using it or who's, who, where the usage is coming from. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to figure that out at some point. It's possible. It may not be. <clears throat> um, we have a new way through the uh, MVLC to calculate our curbside statistics that has just gone into effect, um, which is good since we need to... Jean, correct me, if we're going to need to report this to Eris, correct? Yes. Um, the problem is, and I have an email through to um, Anna and Alicia, when we do reopen to the public <clears throat> and are doing simultaneous curbside, we won't be able to collect that data because as of now, you can't differentiate um, whether a checkout was in person or if it was curbside. So I'm talking with the MBLC to see how, I mean, other libraries have to have gotten in touch with them too, if we all have to be reporting this data um, to figure that out. So that's in process. Um, our CERC numbers. Um, so I've looked back over the last few months and they're coming in similarly compared to the same month from the year prior at about a thousand CERCs less. Mm -hmm. Our overdrive circulation numbers are up, but they are not up by a thousand to equally compensate for our loss of circs. So um, I, I, I've been trying to think of ways that we could drive up our circ numbers a bit. And as of this morning, we released something called um, a surprise book bundle for kids. And you know, we have a new web page. <clears throat> excuse me, and a new web form that people can fill out. You know, if you don't have time to browse online and pick out your kids' picture books and things like that, just fill out this little form and we'll surprise you and we'll go grab these books. You can pick them up curbside. So hopefully that will maybe help drive up our CERC numbers a bit. And then, um, you know, just trying to think of any other ideas to help get the books in the hands of the people who you know want them, I'm sure, um, because we have pretty consistent CERC numbers before, but um, who just aren't coming to curbside. And could conceivably be going to Newburyport just because it's easier and they're open. They're open. More uh, hours. They're not open, but their curbside yeah, is, is operating more hours. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. So there is that. Um, aside from that, the statistics more or less um, speak for themselves. We have a couple of the new StoryWalk. StoryWalk is going to change out um, <clears throat> at the end of January, and we'll be doing Stella Luna, which is the story of the baby bat, um, which will be really cute. Um, we, I went on it. I don't mean to interrupt, but I went on the story walk on Tuesday. It was oh, wonderful. Good. absolutely wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, yeah. And we uh, have nine people so far who filled out the QR code for to win the free raffle, to, to win the raffle for the free book. 
So that's good. They're figuring out how to use the QR code and enter the form and, and all that while they're at the story walk. So I'm happy to see that happening. And it's cute because from my office, I can actually see the little families walking around and I'm like, ah. So every time I see somebody, I'm like, yay, we got more people. <laughs> I kept looking in the library to see if anybody saw me out there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think Katie's desk faces the wrong way, but mine faces right out yeah. the window. Yeah. yeah. So it's great. Um, we transformed a little bit of communication. So I'm trying to take over a bit from Katie to free her up to do more programming. So I'm doing the children's newsletter now. And if you got the newsletter this morning, you'll probably notice it's a combination, adults and children. Um, so I'm trying, and you know, I mentioned in it that I'm hoping, you know, maybe you'll see something from the other side that you didn't know we were doing that you might be interested in, and maybe there'll be crossover for mm -hmm. um, marketing programs and things like that. Good idea. It'll have to, I think, down the road once once the day comes, and we can do our regular, you know, huge amounts of children's programming in person again. They'll have to break into two separate. Um, emails because it would just be too long. Um, but for now, I think this might work. Okay. I think that's, right. that's about right. it. In, in terms of your digital engagement and the different figures for the different portals, it may not be different people. It may be that certain stories, you know, an Instagram story is, is image-based and a, and a Facebook story doesn't have to be as much. So you may be maybe the true. same people who are engaging differently with the with the content. So I just that's true, yeah. I just want you to think about that as we're analyzing what's happening or trying to analyze what's happening. Right, right. Well, the story walk was very popular for both <laughs> Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> Good. People were happy that to is, see it. Yeah, no, it. It was very good, actually. My my wife and granddaughter did it on Tuesday also. Oh, great. Nice. Beautiful day. Yeah. They enjoyed it. They actually they tried doing it when it first went in. I think we had the snowstorm. I think they made it to the sixth station the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we uh, were thinking of offering uh, snowshoes to people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they went back, so they, they really enjoyed it. That's great. And I had sent it to the, well, Aaron had sent it to the paper, and then I sent it to, um, Jen Solis, who has always been great to us, but yep. she's been cut back. I guess she now only covers uh, planning board meetings. <laughs> oh. So um, she sent it on to the same fellow that Aaron had sent it to, and I didn't hear anything. Did you hear anything, Aaron? No, I didn't yeah. send it to him. I had sent it to the MVLC for their um, Oh, I thought you said you sent it to R Richard Lodge. No, but I worked with him before. Um, okay. He is very supportive of the of the library, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if he, he does wind up putting it in somewhere. Yeah, I think that would be great. Um, if, but you know, if, if it goes a little longer, I can send him one too. Maybe just double up on it. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh uh, well, when the story changes. Yeah. Story right. Story right. Exactly. Right. Is that, are you done okay. airing? Yep, that's it for me. Okay. Are you directing me, Chairman, or am I <laughs> just jumping in? No, you, you, we're dealing with the director's report, so <laughs> let it flow. <laughs> okay. Um, so for facilities, I, I, Got to knock on wood somewhere, but we seem to be relatively stable for now with heat. Sure. Um, Fred Doherty climbed up, and made me so nervous climbing up that ladder um, and went up there and uh, changed out the actualizer. Um, and that <clears throat> appears to have solved the problem. So okay. we're pretty comfortable throughout the building. Sure. <laughs> Stay tuned. <Sure. laughs> And going on to programming. Um, so I have purchased the new Zoom license. The, the writer's workshop people are using it as we speak. 
As I said, there were issues with the town's account permissions. It, it just that the, the restrictions they had to put in for the town board meetings and stuff was, was not uh, conducive to library programming where we people need to share screens and sometimes it's the, the presenter and not the host, which is which was always me. So uh, we're paying monthly for now. I'm hoping with, to uh, include this on the grant application for virtual programming. And I may put in just for the whole year so that we're covered for the whole year. So we'll see how that goes. The holding one yoga session in the evening seems does seem to have increased attendance a little. I think Erin had suggested that. We've got a solid group of four and a couple more interested. Oh, good. Um, the eight week session of writer's workshop begins this morning and is full. And as we said before, Mike Olson is starting with Tech Help, Tech Help Wednesdays virtually. We've practiced a lot and it will uh -huh. definitely be a work in progress. <laughs> I'm holding up my phone to him and it's, <laughs> it's, it, it is, it's a, and it's going to be interesting. And as Dick Raven said, you're, you know, these are technically challenged people that you're Absolutely. trying to work with on Zoom. So yeah. we'll yeah. see how that goes. And he's willing to do it every week, which is great. Yeah. Oh, I been... always, do you mind if um, I interrupt for one second? No. It just reminded me again. Um, and it means we get to add volunteer hours to our statistics report once again, because we haven't been able to have volunteers. Um, but now that Mike is doing, and I know he worked with one patron yesterday um, for quite some time doing a Zoom thing, help, you know, doing tough help in addition to this. So um, this will be great. Yeah. To have a, a virtual way that people can volunteer. Yeah, definitely. For people that have worked with Mike before and hopefully for some new people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been booking quite a few programs for February and March, and I'll apply for funding for some of these uh, from the virtual programming grant, which is due today. I will also be applying for some equipment such as podcasting and video equipment. Programming Youth, Katie McGann has launched her monthly video series around the world with Miss Katie. She's done a great job and she's done all the filming and all the editing and all of it herself. And I don't know if anybody got a chance to see the tease, to watch the teaser that I, cause I put the link on, on the uh, agenda or on the director's report. Mm -hmm. And it, if you haven't had a chance, you definitely should look at it. She's, <laughs> first of all, it's great to see her without her mask on. <laughs> now we know what she really looks like, um, but she's very articulate and she, she loves history. And I think it's going to be great. So I guess it's, is it every month she's going to have a new country, Erin? Yep. Yeah. So the new, the first one is going to release on February 1st and it will be Italy. And um, I'll have to watch that. Yep, Specifically so, Florence, right? Yeah. And she'll oh. have a little food component and the kids are getting clay um, kit, craft kits and they're going to sculpt something. And um, yeah, it's really, we're very lucky to get her because she's energetic and she's excited to like think of new things. It's awesome. Yeah, awesome. we've been fortunate in our hiring. Knock yeah. on wood again. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's next? Oh, okay. So Katie is switching up her story times a bit, and we'll be offering a pajama story time. When does that start, Erin? That also start. Oh, uh, wait a second. Is that January twenty eighth, or is that okay. February? Now I can't remember. Okay. But that's one new thing, and she's also turning the craft kits that we typically offer. Um, we had spoken about making them into a virtual program so kids will be able to do the craft with the other kids and Miss Katie live. So that starts in February as well. Um, maybe pajama story time is January. I can't remember now. <laughs> yeah, I, I meant to check the date and I didn't before I yeah. wrote this. And Jane continues to run a uh, virtual book club and virtual genealogy club and the t attendance has both has been good and, and stable. So that's great. Uh, for staff, we are adjusting to the new partial remote work schedule as best as can be expected. We have discussed that there may be situations where we will need to cross the other bubble, officially called a cohort, 
in order to maintain adequate staffing levels and not close the building. We will try to keep those occasions to a minimum and we'll be sure to distance as much as possible when it happens. We expect this will be our schedule at least through February, although I haven't heard anything, but from the state numbers and everything else, it's not looking like right. anything will change before March, if then. Okay. Uh, friends and volunteers, volunteers are currently not allowed in the building, but the friends were able to make 2000, I, I, it's probably not exact, Aaron, but it's somewhere around $2,000 on the Festival of Trees. We are all in shock and apologizing <laughs> profusely to Aaron because everybody was like, yeah, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> we might get a couple of trees. <laughs> and it, it just, it blew everybody away. I think, you know, I was thinking about it. When you, when you make the dollar amount a little bit higher for whatever it is, people are either, you know, gambling <laughs> with <laughs> with uh you know the fundraising ideas here at the harvest festival and stuff if you make it a little higher it just it goes a lot further yeah i just you know we all thought if people had 25 dollars lying around um at the end of the year they were probably going to be looking at soup kitchens and things like that but they they care about the library how many people yeah. was it all together erin Oh, I don't have the number on the people. I just had the number on the um, total, which was, it was $1,975 that was brought in. We had we had a, a, quite a few hundred dollar and even I think a couple $200 donations. Um, so it's, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> so well. it was 79 trees in total but how many people out of those trees i'm not quite sure well it was a whole lot more <laughs> than anybody anticipated so yeah yeah it's really heartwarming i mean it makes you feel good yeah at work to see how many people came out and supported the library it's really did cool. they see the trees from the outside yes, yes. in yeah. the window yeah it looks it looks really nice they're still up if you want to drive by <laughs> But we will, yeah. we'll probably be taking them down at the end of the month. It would be nice to do something that complemented the trees that showed how much they were appreciated. So like what I you said, yes, I spoke with Tammy and Pam from the friends group and I, I was talking about that same thing. I'm like, I'd love to do like a big thank you or a poster, a big thing to put in the windows and with the tally and all that. So Pam um, agreed to do, start work on that. We will, when, so when we take everything down, we'll put something back up that talks about, you know, the success of it. Appreciating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Something for Valentine's Day. Oh yeah. Yeah. We can say they showed us the love. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That, no, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. That is a good idea. And something I forgot to mention about the Friends also is that uh, it was a group effort by the members of the board to make the story walk signs, which I saw got put up, Erin. Was oh, that good. yesterday? Oh, did put them up? Yeah. Yay. Yeah, I so, saw James earlier in the week, but I wasn't sure when he was going to get them up. So that's Yep, great. they're up. And okay. they were, I guess they were sort of, the, the sign was carved by Joan's husband and the painting was done by Pam. Uh, Kenny. Yeah. Okay. So they're, the, and they're, ju they're just what I pictured. So yeah. they're perfect. They're kind of, oh. you know, light and fun. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, they're really awesome. They did a great job. And saved they a lot of money doing it that way. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars doing yes. it that way. Yes. <laughs> and I think they're better than what a, a print shop would have actually done because for the purpose, we wanted something a little um crafty warm right. you know nothing too polished you know right yeah yeah where it worked out perfectly yeah so i guess that is the end of the director's report okay so fy22 budget is next Okay, so uh, the letter was was sent. Um, it was a collaboration. Aaron had 
had supplied quite a bit of the content specifically about communication and outreach. And um, Dick provided wonder wonderful, as always, editing skills. So it was a joint effort really between the three of us for the most part. Um, that, and that has been sent off to Tracy along with the request. That was all due January 4th. Has, has there been any uh, idea or direction uh, from the town as to what may be happening away, you know, in terms of budget? Not, not at all. I, I've watched, tried to watch the FinCom uh, meetings there may be one now since I wrote that, I have to go back and check. But no, um, I even had to uh, ask Tracy if she wanted us to include a, a cola, a 2% cola. Okay. So, you know, maybe no news is good news. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, just curious as to if they were giving any indication as to how things were. Yeah. Oh, are we planning to give a presentation to FinCon like we did last year? I have no idea. It, I, I would like to think, consider it for sure. Uh, Tracy set it up that we would have meetings in fe in February, I think it was. Okay. Well, let me strategize around this. I'd like to, I just want to say, because I'm thinking of it now, so I don't forget it. You know, one of the main issues we're trying to do is to get you some administrative help. Mm -hmm. And it would be very useful to know which town departments have their have administrative help and which ones don't. So yeah, we can poise the argument in terms of well, the, these here are the departments that are, that that do have administrative help for their for their leaders, and and we want to say. Now, yeah, that, be, that's a very good idea. So yeah, I think and you you indicated to me, Jean, that uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Sue Noyes, was both the administrative assistant for the Con, uh, Conservation Commission and was the town IT person. And she has, I don't know if everybody's aware of it, but she has left. And they're, they're advertising now for a new IT person. Are they gonna fill the administrative mm -hmm. assistance position separately? So are we looking at two people now? Take that, you know, what she was doing. So I think to hold on what Dick was saying, yeah, let's see, you know, if they can have an administrative assistant, uh, you know, and, and yeah, absolutely. And the other good news, you know, with with my getting an admin assistant who would also be a library, you know, employee would do right. other things would be that it would enable us to open more hours. Okay. So that's, you know, that's the pitch I've always given. And yep. it's the pitch I gave this year. So yeah, and when we do the pitch, the live pitch to, on Zoom, I right, so, uh, the context is also within the context of our budget, right? Yeah. Uh, Dick, could you talk a little bit louder? I'm having a little trouble hearing you. So the context, <clears throat> we should do it within the context of the size of our budget as well, because there are town departments that are tiny and there are town departments that are large. And I'm not sure where we fit in that scale, but, but these are the arguments you make. Look, we're, we have this budget of X, and here's a department with a budget of much less than X that has administrative, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. So, and the number of people under employment. I mean, right. These are the ways you build the argument that, that you deserve it. It's not just because I want it, or because <laughs> this result, but because right. it's in keeping with how the town is treating other departments. Right. The conservation board had a different um, administrative assistant. I thought it was, well, it was Jen. Jennifer. I think that that there may have been a transition there, but I know that, well, I know Stu originally was um, before oh, okay. she started taking on the IT stuff, but I think she also was running all of their um, Zoom meetings. Oh, okay. So, because, so I don't know if there was a sharing or what was going on exactly. All right. All right. So, so her primary function was the IT. Yes. Oh, yes. That was her oh, primary okay. function. Oh, okay. But it's you know from right. talking so I, to I, her, I, I, right? I could have misspoke. So. No, that's okay. I may have misrepresented it. Um, I just know that her duties from talking to her this past summer, her duties with the conservation commission were still bogging her down to a certain degree, in terms of meetings and 
all of that. Okay. All right. Well, I think, you know, we've got to start building a uh, case for the administrative assistant. I think it's, uh, it's a function of the service that you provide to the community at large. So I think the numbers clearly indicate that, uh, you know, the level of service that we're providing has increased over time. Mm -hmm. demands, the demands against um, administrative demands for reports and documentation has increased over time also. So if if you are required uh, to be spending more and more time doing that, and less time in directing the uh, needs of the library. So I think uh, those are the kinds of arguments. That we make. And, I, and I think that last year, you know, we uh, probably would have made out uh, with the administrative assistant if um, COVID hadn't hit. That's, that's the way I interpreted what I was told. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's keep beating that drum and uh, you know keep doing good stuff. That's that's the plan. Yep. <laughs> so I don't know if, if you want me to go over the actual numbers that much. Uh, you you can see the the new um, position is in there, and I should also tell you that um, I checked in with Tracy about. Uh, the compensation level changes that we asked for last year for Jane and Marsha mm -hmm. and asked her if she could just let me know how that had all landed before COVID. Mm -hmm. And she then asked me to send her all the paperwork again. So she has sent that off to HR. That's, and that's all I know. Okay. So, right. you know, that, that could increase the budget more if it, if it were to go through. So the new position, I put them at 1450, but that that may be uh, something that the HR has to weigh in on. I'd like to see it higher, uh, but that's that's where I've got it there with the question mark. And basically, the the additional of uh, roughly five thousand for materials to keep us at spending twenty percent of um, materials from the funds and from state uh -huh. aid and not and a two percent call up, so it's pretty much the same as last year, only the extra five thousand for materials and the colas. Okay. I took a look at the the mar and where the 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 increase, you know, the requested budget would leave us, and from what I see, it leaves us in really good shape. But I don't want to give you any numbers right here until I run them by my friend at the MBLC just to make sure that, that this looks good, but we'd be in really good shape okay. um, for, the, for the MAR. So that's another argument to make, obviously. And I will provide you with those numbers as soon as I've clarified them with, with uh, the MBLC. So I think, I think that's, that's it for the budget, unless there are any more questions. Any questions, any thoughts, comments, observations? No? All right, I guess it's a matter of waiting to hear from uh, back from Tracy in the FinCom in terms of uh, you know, uh, additional information they need and uh, their willingness to sit and talk again. Yep, over Zoom, of course. Over Zoom, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Love it. I better start getting, figuring out how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh dear. Yeah. Even though Alex, I gotta say, last night we did the Zoom with the uh, old Newbury of the museum. Um, they had a Zoom presentation last night, which was very good. Good author. Good author. It was Jay Dolan, right? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. He yeah. was. I had him booked to come here. <laughs> yeah. I know. I recall. Yeah. yeah. And actually, we had, we had heard him the night before, uh, not realizing we were going to hear him two nights in a row. He, he had done something on, uh, on hurricanes, the 500 years of hurricanes in New England uh, through the uh, American ancestry uh, and through the state library the night before. So, yeah. How was Interesting. that? It was very it was? good. It was very good. If, yeah, it's his, that's his, um, uh, that was his newest book. Yes. Yeah, the hurricanes. Yes, he was. He was excellent. He, he just is 
was, and again, he did the same thing with the Pirates last night. He was, he was very good. And so if we can, in fact, book him at some point in the future. Well, and I had booked him for the the relationship between the U.S. and China, the historical mm -hmm. relation. <laughs> and then right after that, COVID hit. <laughs> COVID, yeah. So, no, yeah. Was, it was, yeah, he was very good. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, that's great. So Estelle was here. She figured out how to do this. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah. All right. Anything else? Well, Aaron, uh, you've sold the condo. Will you now be homeless? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite ready. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, no, I'm. I'm going to be. I'm hoping for a long close, but because I guess it's going to sell fast, and then. Um, uh, and then I'll be moving my, so my boyfriend and I are going to be buying a place together, but we've got two homes to sell and one new one to find. And it's so confusing. Oh. Oh. It's oh, a boy. lot. It's a lot. And if it goes this fast, <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. Whoa. Yeah. Flabbergasted. I haven't even had the photographer in. How could it? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> we'll see. Oh. But no, I won't, I won't be homeless. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Always camp out in the library. The, the primary rule in <laughs> yeah. sales, yeah. Aaron, you may know this, is when they say yes, stop talking. <laughs> don't talk through the clothes <laughs> that's a very good rule of thumb i may have to tattoo it on my hand but <laughs> <laughs> um so the only other thing i was going to mention is um just the grant and uh we're going to hopefully be getting some well I'm going to apply for some podcasting equipment, a webcam, a green screen. Um, and I can't do it with this grant, but if anybody sees any other grants, I was thinking how lovely it would be to finally buy the light and easy chairs <laughs> for the community room oh, yeah. to use outdoors. Because, you know, my hope is that we're going to be able to do a lot of programming outdoors, you know, whenever, as soon as the weather warms up including adult, you know, author talks and things like that, but there's no way we can lug out all those chairs. So what, if anybody what, sees a, sees a grant, I'm sorry, Dick, what? What is podcasting equipment? Well, I'm learning quite a lot about it. Uh, it's basically, you know, mics with sound reducing um, capabilities. It's, uh, I originally was just going to get it for, and this would also hopefully be something that we would circulate once we can do that with our library of things. So I'm looking at capabilities to have actually four people speak at once. I'm only buying two microphones now, but my thinking is if teens, you know, wanted to use this or whatever, mm -hmm. they might want to do, you know, have multiple people talking, you know, interviews, whatever. Um, so it's, you know, it's basically the equipment to make your podcast sound professional, to uh, tune out outside noise, which seems to be a big, big factor. And headphones to use along with the microphone. So I've been researching on CNET and I've, I've got us at about $900 worth of equipment as of this morning. I have to look at it a little bit more this, this morning. Great. And then the green screen would, you know, would be great for children's if they do story time in front of it, they can, you know, she could be in Florence, you know, while she's reading a story or she could be, they could be anywhere. And that too might be something we could circulate. Um, and a, a webcam just to have a little bit of capability to be able to do stuff without a laptop or a PC and Zoom. I think that's it. So it'll be somewhere around 2,500 for the grant. I have no idea, you know, they're, they're really pushing it with every library. I keep getting emails reminding everybody to, to apply for it. So that makes it sound like they just have a chunk of CARES Act money or something that they're gonna, you know, 
as long as you meet the criteria, which is very slim criteria that, you know, mm -hmm. it's yours. I could be totally wrong, but that's the impression I get. Is there an upper limit on the, uh, the amount? Yeah, I think it's 1500 to 3500 maybe. And then the one, the one program I probably will be applying for is the uh, interviewing, virtual interviewing skills, two separate workshops with a guy who's getting really good um, reviews from other libraries. They do role playing and it's, you know, it's, it seems pretty thorough. So they have to be educational. I, I consider that educational, so. Mm -hmm. All right. That's great. Yeah. We shall see, anything, stay tuned. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody have anything else that they want to discuss or bring up? All right. Um, want to meet again? <laughs> Plan. <laughs> At 9.30. <laughs> At 9.30 on a Friday. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, uh, it's about a month from now, Jim. Unless you want to do it sooner, unless you need to do it sooner. Oh, actually, I think you do all need to vote to approve the budget request. <laughs> Sorry about oh, that. Okay. <laughs> Details. Yes. Okay, so we have a, a motion uh, to um, approve the uh, budget request as submitted. I second it. Move. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. All right. So how does uh, February 26th sound? Sounds good. Since I won't be in Florida. Uh, <laughs> not this year. No, just, just pull the plug on that one too. So. Oh, well. Oh, well. Okay. So the 26th at 9.30. Yep. Hey. Very good. All right. Good. All right. Everybody can continue to be well. Take care of yourselves, and uh, you know we'll get through all of this. And you know, not the distant future, I hope. So. All right. Take care. Right. Take Gene, care. I'll be up to. Come on, to everyone. Bye, okay, everybody. Have a great weekend. Great. Thank Bye. you. All right. Thank you, Gene and Aaron and everyone. Bye. Yeah. See you later. Have a good.